People ask me, Yuki, you have been in the Netherlands for 17 years. So what, you know, why did you come here in the very first place? Do you come here for love or do you come here for money? And I said, for love, of course, uh, for the love of Dutch design. So I was born in Singapore 43 years ago and um, well, this is maybe when I'm about five years old. And uh, these are my cousins. And there's also another one of my cousins, which is actually also in the audience. So, and uh, since I was 12, I wanted to be a designer. I knew I am going to, to be a designer. So, and what was so interesting was that when I went to school, I knew exactly where I'm going to as a designer, exactly which school. And when I was at school, um, I also went on internship. And uh, du during that time, I got to know a lot of uh, different designers also. And also being brought up by a dressmaker, I was also very interested in fashion. So therefore, I had a lot of design influences already when I was a kid. And uh, one, of, one of my very, very favorite designers is uh, Dries van Noten uh, from Belgium. And what really, really fascinated me um, you know, for, for the beginning of my design career was, was Dries's amazing fusion of his sensibility of the East and the West, the old and the new, the masculine and the feminine. I think that was really, really to me um, super exciting. And, um, you know, when I was in school and I went on an internship, I also got to know more designers um, from the people that I work with. And from, from there, I was particularly fascinated by uh, two, two designers. One would be Mr. William Harold Wong, and his, uh, you know, with his company, William Harold Wong and Associates. He is Malaysian, and uh, his, his personal cultural work uh, really excites me because, again, just like Dries, he was also mixing the East and the West, you know, the old and the new, which I thought was really, really fascinating for me. And through, also through internship and through all the designers I know, uh, they, they seem to be also like really, really fascinated with Dutch design. And, and I found a studio that was, I really, really loved uh, in the 90s, close to the Dunbar. I think they were really very much the pioneer of, you know, wonderful, well thought out corporate designs, you know, from very cultural, very expressive cultural work, you know, such as the Holland, Festi uh, Holland Festival, to very corporate, very serious work like the police. I think at that time it was so progressive. I think in general, Dutch design is just so expressive, so um, unconventional. You know, it, from the country that I, I, I come from, you know, design is always extremely functional and extremely sensible. And I think for, uh, in, in the 90s or even before, I think Studio Dumbo actually created such amazing corporate work that is both emotional and functional. So, well, I had two years of uh, uh, four years of education in graphic design. And afterwards, you know, we all have to, for, for the guys, we all have to go to the army. So for two and a half years. So that was like me and one of this group of people. So, and uh, well, you know, you can spot me <laughs> because I'm the one who looks most like a light bulb. So, so after that two and a half, uh, two and a half years of military training, um, that was in 2000. And in 2000, uh, 
it was a very interesting time for me because in 2000, I decided to go to the Netherlands. Uh, I went to visit a friend of mine, Alice, living in Amsterdam. And I had all these amazing uh, Dutch idols that I wanted to meet. You know, when I was in, in school, I would read almost, uh, I would buy the yearbooks of the Design Association's yearbook and I would just flip them and I would just remember all these amazing designers that I wanted to meet. So in 2000, I went to Amsterdam, I called up a lot of design studios and I said, I really want to meet you. You know, so at that time, I already, I already left school and I've already had three years of professional working uh, experience. So I was really, I was super, super lucky that when I visited uh, the mecca of my design religion, Studio Dunbar, and they offered me an internship. So I had, I had such great pleasure uh, to work with the people over there for three months, and I actually did nine projects. So it was, it was super exciting for me. And after that, I got a job in The Hague uh, for a year and a half. And afterwards, I went on you know, a totally different trip. I took, I took the plunge. I basically went to Amsterdam and started my own design studio, basically. So, you know, what is interesting about uh, employment and, and being self-employed, I think the, the, the most interesting thing is for me, when you're, when you're employed, you know, everything is done for you. You know, you, you have all your insurances, you have everything. All that you need to do is just be a designer, to do what you really do. And when I started on my own in two, 2002, um, you know, it, was, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a very easy time, you know, coming straight from one culture to another, you know, and I had this dream. I, was re I really wanted to be part of the, the design scene in, in, in the Netherlands. You know, for me, that's a dream come true. So I started my own company and I was like, you know, navigating the culture, navigating my clients' corporate culture, so, uh, yeah, and, and I had a lot of um, very interesting encounters and I was really, really very lucky to have met a lot of uh, wonderful people helping me along the way. So, I started, I started my company called Matt, you know, I started it because I thought there was a very interesting um, gap whereby I come from Asia where a lot of products a lot of products or when I go shopping, there were a lot of beautiful packaging that seduces me. So I think in, in uh, around 2000, I think the Netherlands in terms of retail was sort of still very sane and still very functional. So that was where I thought it was very interesting that I could maybe, you know, it could be something very interesting. So while, while, when I moved to Amsterdam, I, I tried many different kind of clients from museums to, to ministries to uh, property to electric companies, you know, to also a fashion retail lifestyle. So, you know, coming, coming from Asia, I thought, oh, wow, you know, I really particularly enjoy a retail and lifestyle, hospitality, fashion, sports. And um, the very good people from uh, Nike, from Tommy Hilfiger and Hema, you know, had so much faith in me and they were happy with what I do and they gave me more, more work. And that was where I started uh, met the lifestyle communication boutique, which I wanted to, you know, I thought that was a very interesting place for me in the Netherlands where I'm able to help, you know, these lifestyle clients to express and basically seduce people to buy the products and services. So we, we, we did projects with Nike, you know, that was my early projects. We, we had a lot of fun working with Hema many opportunities you know we did also work with uh, Tommy Hilfiger did a lot of the yearbooks and the Vacamp you know we did all the packaging and all that so yeah and uh, you know there was there was this thing about doing all these amazing commercial projects and there's 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 a part of me that you know I was really really grateful for all the opportunities from the Netherlands. I thought it would be great not only just to be part of the, the design community, but also maybe in terms of a cultural aspect to actually give back to the Netherlands. So I was, uh, also did quite a few cultural projects and one of it is 
the Amsterdam Museum, basically. So my company met, we actually won the pitch for the Amsterdam Museum, the total rebrand of uh, the Amsterdam Museum. So Amsterdam Museum is very much in the heart of the city, you know, very much in the center. They wanted to be the international hub and also the gathering place, not only for Amsterdamers. So the logo that we designed for them looks like the heartbeat of the city. So we did the whole program, you know, as usual, the stationery, a lot of print work, and also created the website, you know, did a lot of uh, the setup of the brand so that they can also move on towards uh, social media. So we had, we had I mean, it, even though it was uh, a, a tough time for me to navigate in the Netherlands, also did really a lot of amazing projects, met a lot of uh, amazing people. You know, and uh, well, during around 2013, you know, there was the <coughs> financial crisis of, of Europe. And um, it was interesting that when I was a kid, my grandmother, who comes from China, always tell me that, uh, you know, this proverb in Chinese, that, um, you know, there's no person that has a thousand good days in a row. And there are no flowers that stays red, red for a hundred days. So that was for me such a strong, impressionable uh, proverb that when it came to the time where, you know, my clients are cutting costs and, uh, you know, I'm feeling the strain of the economy. And that was, that was where it also evoked a certain, you know, part of me that, that, that has been inside. I was, in, I was already in the Netherlands for about 15, uh, 15 years, about 13 years at that time. And there was this calling deep inside that I, I have, I've done a lot of things in the Netherlands and I would really wish to contribute, you know, not only to the Netherlands, but also to where my grandparents come from, you know, China. And at that time it was also, I mean, China was booming. It was really such an amazing time. I, I, I could speak the language, so I thought, hey, maybe that would be uh, quite an interesting time for me to maybe explore a new territory, a new territory that, you know, somebody like me who constantly is looking for the thrill of discomfort, you know, running, coming from Singapore to the Netherlands, and then now actually setting sight, you know, on China, which is, for me, as much as I can speak the language or I feel that I could relate to them, was something super ambitious for me. And I know it's not, not going to be an easy road, and especially for such a long voyage, you know, so-called looking at uh, the East again, I thought this is, this is a time where, you know, I need to be a, I need to have some support, another voice that could help me, you know, pull everything together for my big voyage. So, and uh, yeah, so uh, through a friend of mine, I actually met uh, Claudia, Claudia Meyer, who's sitting here. So she, had, I just met Claudia and I thought we clicked and she has actually has uh, corporate experiences and also experience in China, which I thought it would be actually very interesting for us to maybe you know, collaborate and work towards my dream of being where I want to be. So, well, I would like to actually invite Claudia to share with you guys the little bit of a background of how we actually, you know, proceed towards uh, looking east for me. Claudia. <laughs> to grow my company and he wanted to expand uh, geographically, especially to China. Um, that was um, a great coincidence because I, at that time I came back uh, living in Singapore. I came uh, to Amsterdam to work for the studio. In Bochum, before that I worked uh, two and a half years in Guangzhou in China. This is a, a photo where I was speaking at a company event. I was working for a big uh, lighting company. Um, so for sure we had a lot in common, uh, basically our uh, 
experiences China and also a lot to talk about because uh, UK had a lot of big uh, important questions. Um, so um, I left the corporate world in 2015 and then I followed my inner calling for coaching so I completed a professional coaching program and then I thought okay now what do I do with my coaching skills I want to coach Asians who come to Europe to work and uh, to study and therefore I conducted 30 interviews and I reached out to my network and one of them was Alice sitting over there she's a game designer from Amsterdam and uh, she told me yes I can help you I know a guy from Singapore and that's basically how we met um, so in this uh, in this conversation we had a lot of uh, yeah, common grounds and it turned out to be a longer conversation than we planned um, so the goal for our collaboration was basically to, to develop the company to grow um, especially to China but first instead of looking far we first looked close to, to basically what's inside of UK and um, I work mostly with creative uh, people and uh, I sh I'm sure you all agree with me that it's easier to work in a very I uh, visual way um, so basically we uh, sketched and we were drawing with pens and paper very traditional way to find out basically what uh, at the core of UK where does he really stand for and which direction does he want to go so this is always where it starts uh, from the inside um, so the rocket ship um, this is basically a metaphor we came up with that represents very well what Yuki stands for on his term it has it includes different key values um, I will mention one later but basically it means for him that he is the rocket ship which, uh, which elevates brands uh, to the next level so I always work with, with metaphor or with symbols from the nature or from, from objects that you know which is easier than to, to express and articulate in his case it was the rocket ship um, key values that is really the starting point was the starting point in our conversation because that basically is, is the common ground um, to then also decide okay in which direction does he want to go and how does he want to do that and in a way my role was really the not the gatekeeper but a value keeper in a way so I was always the one that, that kept uh, Yuki close to his key values in all his decisions so these key values also based the yeah were the foundation for future uh, decision taking uh, for his ventures into China <coughs> um, designer versus businessman he mentioned that shortly before when he said okay I started uh, to be self-employed um, so there are a lot of new tasks coming along the way besides the, the, the design task and Yuki is a brilliant designer and he uh, asked me to also become a better uh, businessman um, so for that uh, we, we work together um, to explore uh, where does he stand uh, for and what, in which direction does he want to go. Um, it also involved then taking action, so also when he was in China um, to see okay, which decisions are in line with the values. Um, for instance, one of his key values uh, is independence. That means uh, he wants to work independently uh, and also he wants to keep his company independent and in negotiation with, with clients for instance or with, with a business partner that was always very important to, to come back to the key values and say okay is this really in line is this decision in line with, with your key values so um, yeah the training of the, the, the businessman basically it, it was really on yeah ongoing um, and um, yeah I would say that he definitely is a much better businessman uh, with all this experience uh, from China we worked very closely on his uh, expansion to China that's a, a photo uh, of him in China <laughs> exploring uh, what is this actually Starbucks and McDonald's 
Ah, men så har så har jeg andre tider lidt efter. <laughs> so we worked very closely, and for sure it was a, a big advantage that I also lived in China, because we had this common ground of, of understanding each other's culture, and of course in communication with clients, that's very important, because then we could also bounce off ideas and, and brainstorm together, okay, what is the right uh, strategy, and what is in line, again, with the key values to take decisions. So we all, to give you one example, we also, um, uh, uh, Yuki was in um, negotiation about a, a budget or to define his role in a certain project, and that was very helpful to have basically his kind of, yeah, external advisor or, or coach to bounce off ideas to then take the right decisions. Uh, for himself. Um, this is a screenshot from uh, WeChat. Um, that's the, the, Europe, the equivalent to WhatsApp in China. And well, the reason why, why we show that is because uh, our coaching co collaboration was not just a straight, okay, a very session number one, number two, and one hour Skype, which was sometimes, but it was also sometimes. Uh, shooting a question, hey, how would you deal with this? Or I have uh, this specific question, uh, do you have an a time and an hour? So the communication was very fluid, it was very flexible, and we also had, uh, I remember once, a, a coaching conversation, a chat coaching conversation, because uh, I remember you were at a client's uh, <laughs> office, and he was just, and he was sitting with this question, and, and there was just no other way than the time thing, so trust us, we are both very fast type writers. <laughs> so this is really something that the coaching is, is a co-creation, a cooperation, and it means that, that as a coach I'm fully committed, I expect the same from the client, and it's sometimes also in the weekend and in the evening because of the time shift. You keep working on multiple projects, multiple time zones. And this leads me to West and East, um, and you will continue to talk. Thank you. And I've been working with uh, Claudia, you know, for, I mean, for my way to China. And um, for the past one and a half years, I've been traveling to China, you know, um, not only dealing with clients in Europe, but also traveling over there. So since a year and a half, I've been to China about eight times. So, you know, lots of jet lag, super adrenaline rush, you know, meeting a lot of people. Um, again, another, another major step, stepping out of my comfort zone. I mean, I think it was very interesting to, to, for me to think that, I mean, being able to speak the language and, you know, having my grandparents coming from China would be, would be easy. But I think it's, it's for me, you know, there are a lot of observations which I can personally relate to. I think the Chinese people are very much, uh, they take the, their personal identity, you know, their occupation or what they do is actually very much their personal identity, which I can actually relate to that um, 17 years ago when I was in Singapore. I mean, it was, it was, it was again very interesting. Um, you know, there's just so many opportunities in China and uh, a lot of people I met were actually very, very impressed with uh, what, you know, my company does. And uh, that was exactly what I, what I hoped to achieve, you know, trying to be the bridge between the East and the West to be able to contribute what I know, you know, to, to China and hopefully to also bring, you know, a lot of interactions between the two continents. So I think what is interesting also is that the, uh, in terms of culture, you know, coming from from the east to the west and west back again, is that um, I also noticed that the, the difference in culture, as in, you know, the, the understanding of creativity is so different between the east and the west. So that would also, the way, the way processes are and, um, you know, understanding. But we also did a lot of very, uh, you know, along the way we had some really successful cases, like I worked with, an you know, event company who created the event for the opening of uh, the most premium designer mall in Beijing, SKP. So they're opening their men's uh, designer floor. So we actually helped them 
I mean, I, I'm actually part of the team to help them, you know, develop this event whereby we wanted to position the, the floor, you know, the men's floor as, you know, the kingdom for, for style for men. So it's sort of like highly dramatic, which, uh, you know, the Chinese love to be entertained. So we actually, you know, turned the whole floor into almost like a castle with soldiers holding flags of, of this kingdom of theirs, you know. So, um, and, you know, you tip, you know, very dramatic openings and, you know, directors, which I think is, again, amazing to see, you know, how different uh, things are. And, you know, we, there's always Instagram moments or there's WeChat moments, photo taking moments that you have to, you know, incorporate, you know, um, yeah, dr dramatic lighting and a lot of like entertainment value, fashion show and things like that, you know. Um, turning this very exclusive place into almost like a gentleman's club. So, well, that's me and my little team, you know, like working day and night. You know, I was really running two time zones, you know, like morning I would be in the daytime, it would be China time. And then uh, and after six o'clock, which is actually 12 o'clock in the Netherlands, I will continue. So it was like major adrenaline rush. I mean, I, I don't drink coffee and doesn't matter. <laughs> so um, also another very interesting, successful job is that we work with um, Nike China and we were helping Nike China to launch the Hyper Adept 1.0 shoe, which is actually the first performance shoes that uh, when you step on the shoe, it actually laces itself. It's about, I think, 700 euros a pop. So that was, uh, that was another, you know, um, successful story of this uh, collaboration in China. So, you know, I mean, in the meantime, you know, not only are doing, you know, investing time in China, we also did like, you know, simultaneously in Europe projects like for Nike and, you know, uh, rituals, which is great. Again, this, you know, sensibility of the East and the West was actually very exciting for me working with rituals, you know, and uh, also with Starbucks. We do a lot of work regarding the experience and also the uh, communication of the brand within the stores. So, you know, the, I mean, Matt, uh, in China is still an infant, but we did some really nice things along the way. You know, I still very much want to base myself in Amsterdam, serving the East and the West, you know. So uh, there are a lot of very exciting things that I, I'm looking forward to, to creating. So there is a masochistic part of me, which is constantly looking for you know, a, 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 a stepping out of my comfort zone. And I really think that, you know, in order for me to, to do what I do, what I love to do for, for a long, long time, I need to constantly step out of my personal, you know, comfortable territory. And for me, being, uh, using my intuition, which has worked for me very well all this while, you know, I think it's something that, that, that I, I truly value. And I think most importantly also is to be really to be fearless and, and to be fearless and hold on to the faith that you love. Thank you. <laughs>